give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. And let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. And let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son and all oh, let the weak say I am strong and let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us and now oh, let the weak I am strong and let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us give thanks give thanks give thanks Amen and amen. We give thanks today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, for sending your wonderful, only begotten Son, Christ Jesus, to finish the work you sent him to finish by dying on the cross, shedding his precious and sinless blood for us. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. And we welcome you this morning to this lovely place, Whithorn, the cradle of Christianity in Scotland, where St. Ninian first brought the gospel way back in the 4th century AD. And we thank you for joining us today for this wonderful morning service in praise all the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Three in one. We are rejoicing today in what the Father has done for us. And we are rejoicing that we, who are weak, can completely surrender to Him 
and become strong in the strength of the Lord. Oh, Father God, in this time of prayer and intercession coming before the Lord, please join us. And let's be as one in the Spirit together, just like the early church in the book of Acts was. Because in unity there is strength, the strength of the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. So we give this whole meeting, we give our, not only this meeting, not only this gathering, but also we give our whole selves, to put our whole selves on the altar today for thee. For we know even the Lord Jesus himself in his earthly ministry said without you, without the Father, I can do nothing, he said. And we without him are nothing and can do nothing but because of him the weak can say and we're all weak sometimes the weak can say I am strong and the poor can say I am rich hallelujah and hallelujah and this morning let us remember not to strive in our own strength and let's read a scripture about that now. About exactly why we do have the power through Jesus Christ, to the great intercessor, to take authority over all the works of the devil, of the enemy, and to pray and to intercede and stand in the gap. This is from... 2 Corinthians chapter 10 this morning. Just a few verses. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, reading from verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, not fleshly, in other words, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And again, the famous passage in Ephesians 6. Now a lot of people don't actually understand what the armor of God is and why we wear it. A lot of people even think it's physical armor. A lot of people accuse the people of God who are also called Christians. A lot of people accuse us, oh, they all say, you know, the, one of the most common things that's said as an objection to Christianity, as an objection to believing in and giving a life to Jesus. One of the things that's often said, there are two things. One of them is, well, if he's such a great God, why does he cause all this trouble in the world? And why do people get sick and die? Why is all this suffering? But the second one is, oh, there have been more wars and bloodshed fought in the name of Christ and Jesus, in the name of religion, than anything else. Well, yes, if you count the Crusades and a lot of other wars that have been fought, you could say that. But that is a complete misunderstanding of what the real walk is all about and what the armor of God and all is all about and what warfare is in the spirit. It doesn't mean you go down the street looking for Muslims to kill or looking for atheists to kill or looking for anybody else to kill. It means it's in the spirit and this is spiritual armor, the armor of God. Now, dear viewers and listeners, in my early walk, just after I got born again or saved, however you want to call it, gave my life to the Lord, I was uh, in a choir and it was a Gaelic, a Scottish Gaelic or Gaelic choir. And I was in a, a, a place, I'm just doing a wee bit of teaching here. I was in a place in Oban and I was actually sharing a room with another, uh, another girl in the choir. And this girl was actually the wife of a Mormon priest. And she had what they call armor. Now the Mormons, also known as the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, just to let you understand, it is not 
the same religion. It is not the same God that they worship. But she did have what she called her armor of God. And that was physical underwear. That's what they call sacred underwear. And they all have this and they take it off. They never take it off in the shower or any time ever. You've got to keep this physical armor on. But that's a complete misunderstanding. This is spiritual armor that we need to because our weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty to the spiritual mighty to the pulling down of strongholds so this is a famous passage from Ephesians 6 let's just start with verse 10 because it's a bit like we've been singing earlier together finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's a whole hierarchy talked about there of de demonic forces. Just like a physical army, there's an army, and even, we are the army of the Lord, but there's also another army, a demonic army, the army of Satan, who have got different levels and structures, and that's what we're talking about there. And notice we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but the spiritual forces that of darkness that are behind them. Wherefore, verse 13, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore. Notice the repetition of the word stand, because God expects us to stand. Those who endure until the end shall be saved. We need to learn to stand no matter what comes against us in the strength of the Lord, knowing we have his armor. Now this is very important. Many people now in the Western world, especially the churches so-called in the Western world, they do not know how to stand. We need to stand in the strength of the Lord. Verse 14, stand there for having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts, all the fiery darts, notice that of the wicked, not just some, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. In fact, David's Bible, he'll be speaking shortly and bringing you the word of God as actually a sword Bible. It's got a big sword on the front cover and that is what it is the sword of the word of God you see that and the helmet of salvation the sword of the spirit verse 18 praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching watching watch and pray Jesus says and particularly in these last days there it is there, praying always and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Pray for them. Pray for the saints as you're led of the Lord. And for me, says the Apostle Paul, that utterance may be given unto me and that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which for which I am an ambassador in bonds for he's writing this letter from the prison in Rome that whereas I might that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak you see thank you father god for this word today that you've given us may we be worthy to be called an end time army and be faithful and strong in the strength of the Lord give us Lord today 
wisdom and understanding, adding to knowledge, for wisdom is the principal thing. Give us wisdom. We ask and, and we covet more of the fruit of the Spirit as well as the gifts. We covet a godly character that we may show forth thy holiness in this dark time and thy light and thy truth. We think now, Father God, of that army of angels that worship forever before the throne in heaven. And we think of the saints of the great ones, the great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us, who are ever cheering on and watching over the saints on earth, those of us who are on the earth. Let us become, in the name of Jesus, true saints of God. Because the word saint comes from the Latin sanctus, meaning holy one separated people a royal priesthood in the words of thy precious apostle Peter now with you in glory Lord Lord this is this is so important Lord that we be a royal priesthood a peculiar people that means a different people different from the world separated from the world in the world but not of the world and a holy nation to show forth the praises of God. That's why we're here. Father God, I come against all those principalities and powers and take authority over them in the name of Jesus that have blinded so many of the saints that have caused them to wander off the way, the way of faith, the way of truth. For thou, thy precious Son, Lord Jesus, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. And oh, Father God, so many of us, so many of our former brothers and sisters have wandered off the way and into the pitfalls and traps set by the enemy. But Father God, in these last days, of this Laodicean church on the earth, especially in the Western world, as the book of Revelation, that we so much need those shining white garments of righteousness, not our own righteousness, but the righteousness and holiness of God, that we need I salve that we may see, and we need gold refined in the fire, Father God, we rebuke right now that spirit of fear. Because thy word says, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And we thank you for those things and we believe that now, Lord, by faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. In the words of Smith Wigglesworth, he said, I am not moved. And we repeat those words and believe them in our hearts today. I am not moved by what I see. I am not moved by what I feel. But I am moved by what I believe. And I believe the word of Almighty God. And we lift up and exalt thy word today, Father God. Because Jesus... He himself, in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth, and we beheld his glory. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, how we glorify you right now today, and how we look forward to when we can be with you in glory and actually behold the full glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. And now we want to walk in your steps and
be you. We are you on the earth. We are as you on the earth. But we need to walk as Jesus walked. We have the mind of Christ. We need to show forth his glory on earth. That is our calling. As we come before you right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, this sound mind that thou hast given us will help us and the perfect love of God, who is love, to cast out all fear and to stand against the wiles of the devil in these last times to fill everybody with fear. We come against that take authority over it in the name of Jesus. Stand fast, saith the Lord. Stand fast in my armor. Stand fast on my word. Only believe. And I will bring all these things to pass. All my promises are yea and amen. Only stand firm. Look not to the right nor to the left. As I was with Joshua. I have already said I will be with thee. For I am that I am. I am the Lord. I change not. Obey me in all things. And I will show forth my glory more than ever before my risen glory through my church my true people thank you Lord thank you Lord amen and amen so stand fast today people of God do not be swayed do not believe everything you hear or see on the media or in the papers or whatever else you're looking at social media but listen to the voice of God in Jesus name Amen and Amen thank you Father God let's stand firm let's stand firm and continue to Look to the old cross, not the new smooth false religion that calls itself a new thing, but the old rugged cross. As we sing this song shortly, I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary.
today for he changed me completely a new life is mine that is what by the cross I will stay I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary I believe whatever the cost I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. And this is so important. I believe whatever the cost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lindsay, we're in such amazing days. Indeed we are. We're praising the Lord. You know, God gave me word, Lindsay. Hello, everyone. I'm David Griffiths. My wife, Lindsay, God gave me word to write a book some years ago. Mm -hmm. And the last chapter of the book, we're still working on it. We've had that many legal challenges and that many things to do. Uh, we're still working through it. But the final chapter would be how, and remember this word was given years ago. The final chapter was about how the second coming would come in. Mm -hmm after pestilences and famines. Wow. We witnessed the pestilences. We're now witnessing the famines. I believe mm. it's 100,000 lorry drivers short in UK. Mm. And famines are never formed by lack, but through the inability to distribute. That's right. There's never been lack in the world. No matter what the population in the world is, there's never been lack. Famines have been caused, yes, by sin, but by the inability to distribute goods. That is happening in UK. We are right on the verge of the rapture, Lindsay, mm. without any Amen. doubt Amen. whatsoever. And that is why I want to talk about faith today. So, Lindsay, mm -hmm. thank you very much. We'll see you later. And... Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And in an academic world, the world looks to witness through its own five senses. Faith does not work that way, and if you work that way, you're on your way to hell. Jesus said to Peter, Who do men say that I am? Peter replied, saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And the significant line from Jesus is this. Blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, because flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee. And when Peter started to question the redemption plan, with his mind, he was referred to as Lucifer rather than the rock on which the church was to be built. So those of the spirit moved by the spirit. The Bible says, out of our bellies come forth rivers of living water. And there is a significant verse I want to bring to you today. So then faith cometh by hearing, <clears throat> and hearing by the word of God. Mm. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 
So you all heard of faith healing. Mm -hmm. So healing comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith manifests where the human element is removed. You see, where we have no doubt, where we have no human logic, and it is this Paul is relating to Israel of the time he wrote to the Romans, saying to Israel, he said, all day long I've stretched forth my hands unto a disobedience and gainsaying people. Now I put to you today, this is exactly what we're dealing with in Britain and America. A disobedience and gainsaying people. In other words, a people who have rejected the constitution of Great Britain and America, the Mayflower Compact, the 1534 Act of Supremacy, the 1689 Act establishing the Coronation Oath, all that has been said in the past has been put aside so that a human logic, a worldwide control can come in. And Paul was ministering into the very same conditions when we come across how he wrote to the Romans those years ago. He said, there is no difference between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call him. One barrier to faith in Scotland is the Stoicism, the belief that Jesus came to heal not them all, but only some. But we read in the scriptures something entirely different. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all oppressed of the devil. So we come to you in Witton today, wherever you may be, with a life-saving gospel, not for some, but for all who would come to receive him. And this passage is very significant. For there is reference to Isaiah. We read in verse 16, But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So here we have, before we look at verse 17 and verse 16 of Romans 10, we have this Isaiah expression, this question, who hath believed our report? In other words, who hath believed that he, Jesus, went to the cross to redeem us, not only from sin, but from sickness and disease? And faith being based on the word, for faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. A particular passage of the word of God is being referred to here as who has believed that healing, salvation, is in the atonement of God, that all may come to the cross of Calvary and give their lives to him, not only healed spiritually, but physically as well, because we are the manifestation of his resurrection resurrection his physical resurrection the bible tells us clearly if you read romans 6 that we were risen together with him also in ephesians 2 and verse 6 having come to the cross having given our life at the cross having recognized that he himself took our sickness and disease makeup and coli in the greek which is also i beg your pardon in the masoretic text he grew make up and coli meaning literally sickness pains and disease if you only believe what Isaiah wrote make up coli in Hebrew meaning sickness and disease was taken to the cross and let there that those of us who have been to that cross can only 
not only can recognize that he has saved us from our sins, he has also saved us from sickness and disease. Who hath believed this? That is the question Paul asks. Who hath believed this? Who hath believed our report? I say, have they not heard? Said Paul. Yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth, the words unto the ends of the earth. Yet the church in Scotland does not believe this fundamental truth that he himself took our sickness and disease by whose stripes 2,000 years ago we were healed. John's gospel is very clear. All around us here in Whitton is a form of stoicism that believes that what comes around comes around. There is nothing you can do about it. But I tell you this today, there is something we can do about it. We can give our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross of Calvary, that he himself took our sickness and disease, that it might be fulfilled according to Matthew's gospel 8, 16 and 17, that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, that he himself took our sickness and disease. I tell you this, we come with a glorious gospel today. We come with a gospel of life and blessing Amen. and freedom and glory and might and power and dominion over all that the devil should have placed upon you. For this Jesus is not the Jesus of the Church of Scotland we preach, which is of Jesus who is dead in the grave, who no longer cares about you. This is the Jesus that not only died on the cross of Calvary, but rose again, having taken our sickness, disease, our sin and iniquity to the cross, that we should rise together with him in resurrection glory, in resurrection power. The promise of God even being this to those who believe, saying, I tell you, from John's Gospel, chapter 14, we read very, very clearly, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. There is no point trying to convince those so bound up in their intellectualism and philosophy. They stand there like stooges, not recognizing there is the Spirit of God who moves in power, who comes upon us, giving us the right to bind and to loose, to bring down the devil in the name of Jesus. Even the Spirit of truth, said John, Repeating the words of Jesus, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. You see, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And you in Great Britain, you in America, are being bound by governments who operate by what they see rather than what can be believed. There is the problem. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Jesus at that time looking to the day, looking to the day of the resurrection when he rose from the dead, but not only him, 
but all those who have been to the cross since, who have given their lives to him, are made to walk the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, high above principalities and powers, that whatsoever we shall bind on earth is bound in the heavenly realm, whatsoever we shall loose on earth is loosed in the heavenly realm. So two fingers to you, Calvinism. It is a blasphemous fable, according to John Wesley, Amen. and has sent more people to hell than any other philosophy ever devised. It is from the pit. Yes, we start as totally deprived, but when we come to that cross, he himself took our sickness, disease, our sin, our iniquity. He took our curse that whatsoever we shall say today shall come to pass in his name because we have authority over the philosophies of men. And that day, continues John, ye shall know that I am in my Father, ye in me, and I in you. And greater things, he continues, shall follow those who believe. Because whilst on earth Jesus was operating under the law and now we as Jesus operate having won the victory over the devil. I tell you we are living in extraordinary days and we are to tell all those going to the dead churches the Bible warns of them. It says in the last days there shall be those with a form of godliness that deny the power. This is what we witness in Witton, and the whole community is dying because of this witness of the Kirk. Yeah. But we come with a message today, having painted our building here with a symbol of the blood of Jesus. Yeah. You come to Witton, you shall see the White House once more, yes. covered in red of the blood of Jesus. But once more we bring the message that Ninian brought, that there is a Savior, a Savior who can keep you from the fires of hell. There is a Savior that has already defeated the fires of hell, that you may come unto him in glory, might, and dominion, and declare this victory wherever you may go, that it is no longer the case that what comes around, comes around. It is now the case that we have authority over sickness and disease. We have authority over cancer. We have authority over blindness. We have authority over every wile of the devil. For all authority has been given to the church on earth. What you have witnessed in the past is a dead form of it. But I am to tell you something else that I am declaring a day. The Savior who defeated the devil did not placate him. And the Bible is clear with its warnings against philosophy. We went to the Kirk for seven months here, Lindsay and I. Philosophy after philosophy after philosophy of men. Beware, declares the word in Paul's epistle to the Colossians chapter 2. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, not after Christ, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead, Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him. Can you say that? I'm complete in him. You see, low self-esteem has no part in this. Ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Amen. So if you are complete in him, you are the head of all principality and power. In other words, when the devil comes, you can make him bow down before you because you are here in the name of Jesus to declare the victory of Christ Jesus. In one meeting, one devil decided to talk to me. I declared to him that 
in relation to the healing ministry that our Jesus rose from the dead and then in consequence of this he had no right to put cancer on an individual. The devil did not like this news. He knew it all right, but he did not like the Christian who knew it. You see, the devil knows the Bible very well. He knows of his defeat and spends his time deceiving those in church from using authority over him. So he is delighted with what he sees at the Kirk in Witton, delighted in what he sees at your local church, wherever it may be, for movements after movements have been taken over through the philosophies of textual criticisms. That's how they train their ministers today. I myself refusing a Manchester University degree in relation to ministry, for it was of the philosophies of men, which the devil himself has charge over. But when I give you the message of the gospel, the devil has no right and authority whatsoever. I give the message of the victory of Calvary, rather than the victory of the philosophies of men. We being complete in him, head of all principalities, and powers for by him in chapter one we read not through him as in the new translations which deny the deity of christ by him are you ready for this devil i'm coming against you with this today yes i am i'm coming against you with this today because this is my message to you that you have held the people of this community too long with the false philosophies of men and false ministers and false prophets. I am telling you, devil, today I'm taking charge over you. I take charge over you in the name above every name, the name of Jesus that at this name every knee shall bow, whether under the earth, upon the earth, or above the earth. At this name we are declaring the victory. For by him, are you ready, devil? You know what's coming, you're fleeing. You're scared, lad. You've got the shakes up your ass. But I'm coming at you in the name of Jesus. When it comes to the devil, I don't mellow my language. I give him the language he understands. He's terrified of the body of Christ moving in power. I said what I said to annoy the religious spirits in the religious people. We hear you, you're mocking. I come against these mocking spirits in the name of Jesus. Amen. I bind these mocking spirits up in Jesus' name. But I come at you today, devils, in Jesus' name to set the people free. Now, if you think my language was bad, just listen to Jesus's. One of the worst insults of the day was to call the Pharisees whited sepulchres. That was equivalent to what I just said in modern terminology. It was known within the culture of the day as one of the greatest insults you could ever give to religious people. Hence my language today in contemporary language. I am telling you today, you devil, with all your moronic so-called Christians who sit there looking in their respectability to look to get to heaven, you spirits of darkness, I bind you today. For by him were all things created, in heaven, in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, all things were created by him and for him. That is not in your new translations of the local Kirk of Scotland you go to. It's not there. It's not there. 
for they deny the deity of Christ. But I'm coming at the devil today in the name of the Creator. Listen, he is before all things. By him all things consist. He is the head of the body of the church, the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. In all things he might have the preeminence, having made peace through the blood of the cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him. I say, whether they be things on earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. In the body of his flesh, physical. Listen carefully. In the body of his flesh, physical through death physical death to present you holy how can you be holy if you are sick holy meaning completely whole completely well spiritual and temporal Also to be unblameable, unreprovable, with the condition if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled. Now look what the victory means. By him were all things created, in heaven, in earth, visible, invisible, whether they be thrones, powers, dominions, principalities, all things were created by him and for him. And so in this name, Jesus, I bind the devil from this community. You can bind him in your community too, wherever you be in this world. I bind him and set the people free from the philosophies of men. Our text today, faith cometh by hearing hearing by the word of God. When you start moving in this, you have a great assurance. I read from Norman Grubbs, Who Am I? He wrote this. So we are saying there is a breakthrough in our consciousness to a union with God. Call it whatever name you want to call it. You can call it the baptism in the Spirit. You can call it the fullness of the Spirit. You can call it entire sanctification. You can call it full sanctification. You can call it full salvation. You can call it the victorious life. You can call it entering into his rest. You can call it endowment with power. You can call it rivers of living water. You can call it the second blessing. You can call it the second work of grace. And continues Grub. We specifically mean by that not an in and out relationship in which we have to find him, call on him, regard as his doe in the events of our lives. He is looking on or has to be asked to take over and deliver us as if there's a gap between us. For those who have come to the cross, there is a co-crucifixion. And we have just read from Scripture that those who have been to the cross abide in him. Hallelujah! Above all principalities and powers. The writer of this book, Who Am I?, wrote to my dad in December 1989, saying, My dear Griffo, he said, Oh, hallelujah! He says, Thank God we both know whether in apparent or a cloud or sunshine, God's loving ways are always perfect. 
We always walk in these in operation. And he continues to say, let me find it now. This is just amazing. He says, ah, ha, here we are. We publish our intercessor magazine. It goes out in increasing numbers to about 4,000. We also had last year nine fellowship weekends in various parts of USA and Canada and one in Britain. With increasing numbers. We're a growing army of us. We call ourselves the share of teachers. We give the, listen to this, the truly entrusted word, total, as formerly a walking Satan, now through Calvary and faith, walking Christ, never was the delusion of Christ uh, being a separate eye. It's our calling to take our Christ to the understanding, to the whole truth, to the whole church, that Galatians 2.20, we no longer live but Christ. We live yet not us but Christ. If we no longer live, therefore, there can only be one left remaining. That is the Christ. Ephesians 5.30, we are members, not in your new translations, I preach the authorized version. We are members of his body, flesh and bones. Flesh and bones being physical. Flesh and bones being physical. You see, we're giving you a gospel which you've not heard. A gospel of the total truth, of the co-crucifixion, of the co-resurrection. And it's throughout the whole of the scripture. Paul says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also walk in newness of life, for we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, so we can walk in the likeness of of his resurrection that is above principalities and powers we being members of his body flesh and bones the manifestation of the physical resurrection on earth having defeated principalities and powers which takes us back to Romans 10 and the reference to Isaiah 53 who have believed this report of what the crucifixion what the resurrection Direction, what the atonement truly is and that atonement is this he himself took our sickness and disease he himself took our sin and iniquity that not only should he die on the cross that we should die with him I'm crucified with Christ I live yet not I said Paul and here is the next verse Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Not my faith, his faith. For I walk as him. And when I come across principalities and powers, I give them no truck, because I, in his name, defeated them 2,000 years ago. I have a wonderful book here by Andrew Murray, Absolute Surrender and Other Addresses. He wrote this, I've often been asked by young Christians, why is it that I fail so? I did so solemnly vow with my whole heart, I did desire to serve God, why have I failed? To such I always give one answer, declared Andrew Murray. My dear friend, you're trying to do in your own strength what Christ alone can do in you. That's it, exactly. 
You see, there's no difference. <laughs> oh my God, I want you to receive this. Oh Lord. Only you can understand the union message. Yes. And when they tell me, forgive me, I, I just weep over this because there's just dead religion all around us. I'm giving you the old truths today. And when they tell me, I'm sure I knew Christ alone could do it. I was not trusting in myself. This is so real. My answer always is, you were trusting in yourself or you could not have failed. Mm -hmm. I was at one meeting in Ohio and they were praying to the sick and one minister said, oh, I just pray for them. If they get healed, they get healed. If they don't get healed, they don't get healed. You don't get healed, you're not the Christ. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth to the Holy Ghost and with power went about doing good, healing all oppressed of the devil. You're a false prophet. Such is my determination today. He said, if you had trusted Christ, it could not fail. This amazing paragraph by Andrew Murray. Oh, this perfecting in the flesh, what was begun in the spirit, runs far deeper through us than we know. Mm. Let's ask God to discover to us that it is only when we are brought to utter shame and emptiness that we should be prepared to receive the blessing that comes from on high. That utter shame begins at the cross where you become crucified with him. So I come with two questions. Are you living, beloved brother minister? I ask it of every minister of the gospel. Are you living under the power of the Holy Ghost? Are you living as an anointed, spirit-filled man in your ministry and your life before God? Oh, brethren, our place is an awful one. We have to show people what God will do for us, not in our words and teaching, but in our life. I ask it of every member of Christ church, of every believer. Are you living under the power of the Holy Ghost? And to conclude, words of Watchman Nee. Quoting Colossians 3, 4. Christ our life, a favorite of Sylvia Pierce in America, who names her ministry with that title. Then for me to live is Christ. And these are proof scriptures to show that we no longer live but Christ. Watchman Nee then quotes Galatians 2, 20. I'm crucified with Christ. I live yet not I. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Who hath believed our report? The reference to the atonement. The reference to Isaiah right there in Romans 10. And under the heading, the relationship between Christ and us, Watchman Nee asked the question, what is man's relationship with Christ? And I recommend this book to you called Not I, But Christ. Not I, But Christ. What is man's relationship with Christ? It is not, he says, as many seem to think, 
that we should try to walk in the footsteps of our Lord, imitating, following, copying him. True, the Bible does indeed charge us to imitate our Lord. But this is not the only charge in the Bible. Before we can imitate him, there needs first to be something else. To try to imitate him will end up in failure all too often. The Lord is not like a copy book. Should you try to copy him, you'll discover how poorly you write. As a matter of fact, the power of flesh and blood is absolutely incapable of imitating the Lord. Some may say, is it not written in the Bible that I can do all things through him that strengtheneth me? Many Christians realize that they do not have strength. So they ask the Lord to give it to them. Things they should do, commands in the Bible they should keep, examples set by the Lord they should follow, they simply do not have the strength for. Therefore they ask the Lord to give them strength. They can do all things. Daily they wait on the Lord to give them strength so that they may be able. But they have made one fundamental mistake. They, them, may be able. Lord, it's not for me to live but thee. For I am crucified with you. I live yet not I. I live by the faith of the Son of God, not through my ability or even by my prayer light to ask you to give me that ability will I succeed in being the Christ on earth. Only if I come to the cross of Calvary and bow the knee and say, not my life, but yours, Lord Jesus. And he will say, give up all to follow me. And to many of you, that will be too high a price, particularly if you are rich. You'll be in churches which says, give me a hundred pounds, the Lord will give you a thousand, encourage you to increase your material possessions. But that was not the case in the early church. They laid everything down at the apostles' feet so that they could have everything in common. And for people in a Western society, a material world, in a place where church has adapted to that material world, they will go to churches like the one in Whithorn and live in their material world rather than be in one where we have to give up all to follow him and lay everything on the altar of the Lord so that we become as him. For those who come to the cross give up their whole lives to follow him. Peter said it in Mark 10. Lord, we've given up all to follow thee. And it is at the cross where years ago I witnessed in our mission halls people coming to the front talking of what they'd given up of material wealth so as to follow the Lord. I've not heard it in a general meeting mm -hmm. since. I'm looking here in Whitton to restore true Christianity of the early church where we give up all to follow him and go into the whole world to preach the gospel, where in modern society we can reach the world through the media. We know these programs get heard all over the world, and our hearts are that there be an understanding here in Britain like there is in Africa and Asia, where dear souls have nothing to give up. It's so much easier for them to come to the cross for laying everything down means little materially, but in the Western countries means a lot. But I say to you, there's no other way to be a Christian but to come to the cross of Calvary, lay everything down and be crucified with him. Paul said it, I'm crucified with Christ. I live yet not I. I live by the faith of the Son of God. And Paul, writing to the Romans, declared, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You can't imitate faith. You cannot up it within yourself as such. 
You have to come to the cross, die on the cross, be risen together with him, and your faith is based on what is around you, for you will have walked the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Are you prepared to pay that price today? There's room at the cross for those who are. Will you come today and give your life to him? Father, we come in the name of Jesus and petition thee today for the Western nations defeated because they have forgotten their spiritual heritage mm. in Afghanistan. Defeated because they failed to acknowledge that our battle is not against flesh and blood, as Lindsay has said, but our battle is against principalities and powers. And you know, righteous anger is such as Jesus manifests to those of the flesh in the outer courtyard of the temple who are money changing in the temple. His language was not nice when it came to throwing out those who have taken over the temple grounds. And his language is not nice today for those who've taken over the Church of England, taken over the Church of Scotland, mm. taken over Elam, the Assemblies of God, the Baptist Union, with their philosophies of men. I tell you this, it is not the Father's love that is upon you, but the wrath of God. And just as he threw out the money changers in the temple, so God is throwing you out today and I do it in Jesus' name that men and women could take over institutions, yet not men nor women, but those who are crucified with Christ, whatever gender they may be in the natural senses, so as to bring the true gospel, the true gospel of Christ, which asks the question, who has believed our report? I ask you today to choose the Lord Jesus and be crucified with him, be risen together with him and receive God's glory upon your life. Lindsay, come up, share a few words with us and then Pamela can come and lead the congregation singing. Lindsay. Thank you, David. That is such a crucial word today and such a powerful word. And God was speaking to me at the end of, towards the end of that wonderful, wonderful word of life. And he said, because his words are life, spirit and life. That's what Peter, the apostle said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Your words are spirit and they are life. And what we there is layer upon layer of deadness, like a hard skin upon the people of the Western world, so many, including church people, as they would call themselves. As David has already talked all about that. And Jesus says, Come to me, ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And he says to come as a little child, to just Forget all these layers of sophistication. You know, it's so sad when you see children whose innocence and simplicity has been taken from them. We need to come as a little child before Jesus. Just come to the cross and repent and just get rid of all these layers of superficiality, these layers of sophistication, all that dead weight of religion, dead religion, and come as a little child. It's so sad, you know, that many children no longer play in the streets and have innocent playtimes like they used to have when I was a child because they're all glued to their Xboxes and all the rest of it, playstations, and it's, it's so sad. Jesus wants us to come in innocence and simplicity to him and become as a child again, washed anew, to have a new life again. That's what he wants. And 
You know, he doesn't want this dead stuff. He is such a sweet, sweet saviour. That's what it means about being born again. You come as a little child. In all innocence and simplicity. Washed in his blood from all the cares of the world. All this so-called sophistication and material Western lifestyle. You come as a little child again. And that's when you start walking. Like a child learns to walk with him. There's an old chorus which says, It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. He lives, he lives, Jesus is alive in me. Hallelujah! It's no longer I that liveth. Christ that liveth in me. Take that simple chorus and meditate on it because that's this morning's message that was wonderfully given through David. And now, are we ready for our congregational singing with our congregational singer, Pamela Massey? And here she is. Hey. Hey. Hello, friends. That was... Uh, <laughs> Um, message that God gave through David. I always do this. Speak up. <laughs> I was just saying that the <laughs> message that David, um, that God gave through David, has a lot for us to to digest and take in, soak into our spirit, and learn from. And so much truth in there. And we were doing about healing earlier in the morning session. And all those things um, that David was talking about, everything was backed up with a script, scripture. And, you know, David was talking about healing and um, about... Um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> what she's actually trying to say, folks, this is a disembodied voice here. What she's actually... I'm sorry, it is I, Lindsay. What she's trying to say is... That we did a course we earlier did. this morning, which dealt with is healing for all and healing in the atonement. Yes. And that's what we were doing before this uh, morning service. And basically, um, you know, healing is for everybody. I don't know why I'm bringing this up, really, but I feel that I, I need to say that healing is for everybody. And when we were looking at the scriptures of Jesus healing people, he didn't just heal certain people. He healed everybody. And, you know, the, the other thing, in, in uh, John 14, just before Jesus ascended into heaven, and he was saying about leaving the, you know, the Holy Spirit to come. And I think David mentioned it a bit earlier about once he'd gone, that the disciples and us lot as well would be able to do what Jesus did as he walked on this earth. And even more than that, because... He's already given us the victory, which he hadn't, you know, which in a way it's because of that that we can do and be as Jesus is because he's in us and we are Jesus in this world. So we can do everything that he did and even more. And I think lots of people find that very hard to understand and believe, but we can because because he's in us and he works through us and like David said if we give everything to him then if we die to ourselves and who's left it's Jesus in us so so you know he we are him he is us just as it says in, in, in John 14 in that chapter I remember when I was studying that when I did the first course a few months back it took me a while to get that in my head, but I think I've got it now. Anyway, we're going to sing some wonderful hymns. Are you ready? Are you in good voice? We're going to sing, first of all, I cannot tell why. 
I'm only going to say those few words for each because those few words are the same in every single verse. And uh, I thought, I said to Lindsay this morning, I don't think I know that hymn. She goes, oh, you will do. I said, I don't think I do. She said, then she started singing it. And it's that London Derry Air tune, so I'm sure you'll have no problem singing that. And then the second beautiful hymn is I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. So here we go. <laughs> this 
next to him, I heard the voice of Jesus say, sung Pama. No she loved both these hymns are so lovely and so sweet. But I think I think I know she loves the second one because I could tell because she was doing more gestures. <laughs> no but she does so lovely. And you know it's every word is so true in each of these wonderful hymns. And this one about I come on to me and rest the second one that you sang so beautifully but well, both beautifully sung but you know, it, it just, I feel that we need to pray for the dear, dear people in Afghanistan. And I'm talking especially about the minority groups and the Christians. They're both Afghan Christians and other uh, people of other nations who have been there, who are believers, Lord, that would be strengthened. Oh, Yalama, Shondo Lalama, Oh, Shondo Lalama, Keti, Alabama, Ola Babaki, Shroma, Dalama, Kati, Alama, Kataya, the dust saith the Lord, I am he that liveth and liveth and was dead, but behold, I am alive forevermore. And as thou petitioneth the Father in my name, I declare to you today, that the people of Afghanistan shall be saved. For the gospel shall go out to every creature in the entire world and nothing the devil would try and do to stop this word going forth shall succeed, saith the Lord. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. I healed them all. And today thou can proclaim this word that by the stripes of Jesus thou art healed. So Father, we come in the name of Jesus and petition thee over the people of Afghanistan that they may come to know thee, that there be a mighty revival of Christianity in that land, that we come against the spirit of fear and we thwart the plans of the Taliban who would look to try and kill and murder those who do not agree with them. 
and we pray thy protection, Father, of the blood of the Lamb over every household, that every household be saved, that as the angel of death might well come over, it shall see those households covered with the blood of the Lamb and pass over as in the days of Passover, saith the Lord. We speak this over the peoples of Afghanistan and Pakistan and India and neighboring country that this word shall go forth, thus saith the Lord, even into China, even in the Middle East, that men, women and children be saved to the glory of the Father. Through Jesus the Son, we give thee praise and all the glory. Lindsay, I pass back to you and continue. Yes, thank you, Lord. Also, God, I pray that that was a wonderful prophecy. I pray that that a Damascus road experience shall befall as you did with Paul who was out to kill every Christian he set or imprison every Christian he met every believer he met who was a fanatical Pharisee and and uh, Lord I pray that I know you can do all things are possible to him who believe I know that and Lord I, 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 I'm daring to believe and to pray, Lord, that even among the leadership of the Taliban with their hardened hearts and their bloodstained hands, that, Lord, there will be some who will have Damascus road experiences, who will be forced to their knees by a greater power and a shining light that will, oh, Lord, Lord, all things are possible. That there will be a Damascus Road experience to some, Lord, as well as the dear, dear flock you already have there, Lord. And I, I, I stand in agreement with everything that has been prayed today, Lord, over Afghanistan. Amen. And amen. Yes. Thank you. The blood of Jesus Christ. Can you just move along with us a little bit and get us all on them? The blood of Jesus Christ shed for all. For all those who come to him. That no earthly power can come over the blood of Christ. You know the blood has never lost its power. And the power of the blood of Jesus now is against the devil. As in the old Pentecostal chorus, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. And when the blood of Jesus is against you, you have no authority, no rights. And over Afghanistan, we speak to principalities and powers. We bind you in the name of Jesus. That now, like never before, the gospel shall go forth to every creature in that hurting land that they come to Christ Jesus. On their knees, we set the children free. We set the women free. We set all men free to receive the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for this victory. And thank you too, Lord, that Britain and America has been brought to its knees. The Father, we pray for godly government. Those who recognize the Mayflower Compact, the Holiness Acts which became our Constitution, we restore them back in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Amen and amen. And God bless you and thank you so much for being with us. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. All authority, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth is given to me and I've given it to my church. That's what he's saying. So let's move in that power and with that dedication and that total submission, total surrender that he wants for us. God bless you. Bye for now. Bye.